Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers, and I have the honor of serving as your host today for our short webinar with Patrick Davis of Ingers All Rand. Just a few comments before we get started to help hopefully kind of frame up why we're here and what we're hoping to accomplish during our short session today. And really, we're here because of what you see on your screen. Uh, as you know, there is incredible pressure being placed on business today. You feel it, right? Um, and fortunately or unfortunately, uh, feeling most of that pressure are those in HR because of some of the issues that we'll talk about. The changing business climate is happening far faster and in far greater volume than ever before. And because HR is at the center of that pressure, we need to do something to address that. There's been some very interesting trends lately, though, uh, and I want to just highlight quickly because I think it'll, it'll lead in nicely to uh, the rest of our presentation today. In the last week or so, HR professionals from around the globe gathered at the Society for Human Resource Management. Uh, there were uh, these that, I, I don't know if you can see these or not. Uh, if not, you'll see them on the slide when we send them out afterwards. Uh, but there were some things that kind of rose to the top as being issues, the top issues that HR professionals are facing. Some of those include, I'll just read off a couple of them for you, uh, the fact that the new workforce loyalty, uh, you're seeing about a two to four year time span. Generation Z's most prized corporate benefit is workforce flexibility, workplace flexibility. 40% uh, are asking for more formal mentoring. So uh, you'll see this list of five. There's actually a, a, a whole host of others, but we kind of distilled it down to uh, just a short list of them. But these are things that HR professionals are saying that they're facing. Now, there's an exciting trend, though, in my opinion, and that's this, that there is growing awareness that lean brilliantly addresses these issues, not just these issues, but many more. Um, there's a book that was just published called The Lean Strategy. Uh, a couple names that you'll recognize from that likely are uh, Michael Ballet and Dan Jones. Uh, I have not read the book myself, but everything I'm hearing from some of the thought leaders in this community are saying that this is a, this is a seminal, kind of pivotal book that really taps into this uh, trend that we're seeing. It really gives definition to what we're seeing. Um, if you look at the subtitle, it says, using lean to create competitive advantage, unleash innovation, and deliver sustainable growth. So the point being that lean is being used to address the issues that we saw being uh, uh, thrown out by those at SHRM. So really, you could overlay the concerns and issues that, that uh, HR managers are facing. You could overlay them on this lean house that uh, they, uh, again, touch on in the lean strategy. And you could begin to see how lean can, in, in a systematic, proven manner, begin to address some of the challenges that we're facing. So we're here to bring some awareness and some understanding into making the connections between what Lean offers and what some of the, the challenges are uh, being faced by you and HR and business in general. So we're here today because this webinar touches on some of the areas of challenge and some of the things that are addressed in the Lean strategy. Um, so we're going to do that today. but. As you signed up for this webinar, you likely learned that this is kind of a lead up to, is building up to the Lean People Development Summit, which is happening in September in Savannah, Georgia. And just to kind of illustrate what we're trying to accomplish through the summit, I put on here some of the uh, presentations that are taking place uh, in Savannah, and you'll see how those are being used specifically to address different business challenges uh, and and uh, things that the, the Lean Strategy book talks about. So we're doing this uh, this webinar today. Hopefully, though, we'll see a number of you at the uh, the 
People Development Summit. I'm not going to say a lot about the People Development Summit right now, um, but I do have a couple of important things I want to convey. Um, first of all, Patrick, who you're about to meet, is actually going to be uh, there with us in Savannah. Uh, but we are, frankly, going to be offering something that we've never offered before. So I hope that you'll stay around for um, just give me one to two minutes after Patrick is done presenting, and I'll share with you some things that we are going to provide you should you be interested. So hang in there and kind of learn a little bit about what we're hoping to, to provide that, again, frankly, we've not provided in the past. So for now, though, that's kind of a, a frame up of what we're hoping uh, to accomplish not only in this series but going forward. Let me introduce our presenter for today, though. Uh, Patrick Davis. Patrick is an HR value stream coach for Ingersoll Rand, which is based out of Davidson, North Carolina. Uh, his focus is on talent acquisition of the value stream, targeted at transforming how Ingersoll Rand identifies, attracts, and hires talent for today and for the future. Patrick's been guiding the transformation of both operational and functional environments for the past 15 years, and Patrick, as we were talking before uh, we got on here, you're kind of an interesting mix of somebody who has some continuous improvement background as well as the HR background. So we welcome you uh, here and thank you for, for sharing with us your thoughts. Yeah, thank you uh, and thank you to Lean Frontiers for uh, putting on this webinar series. Uh, always relish the opportunity to share our story and the fun things that we're doing. Uh, Personally, I have a lot of passion for sharing this story so that, you know, the others that went through some of the same struggles and strife that I did, uh, I've been an HR leader uh, in plan environments as well as an operational excellence coach, uh, and wearing both those hats, having some, done some of those struggles, I like to share my story. So I'm going to jump right into it. And if you guys would let me know whenever you're able to see my screen. Yeah, Patrick, we can see it. Perfect. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Um, we're going to spend a few minutes talking today um, more around uh, mindset, so not necessarily looking to teach uh, any specific tools, but I would tell you that uh, in the, the HR transformational journey uh, that we've begun here in Ingersoll ran uh, almost two years ago now, I would tell you that one of the most important things uh, is mindset. and making sure that we have a proactive approach uh, versus a reactive, which is quite common in HR environment, and tying that to what we call intentional leadership. Uh, to bring a little levity to get us started, I took a quick picture of uh, an HR business partner in our, in our space just a couple years ago. You may recognize him and have, have seen others just like him. What I'm trying to, to drive home and point out that when we first started uh, our HR transformational journey, and I would begin uh, conversations with some of my HR leaders or HR business partners, I wanted to get a first an understanding of what their what their challenges were, uh, what emergencies were they dealing with, uh, what was the uh, the average day or the normal day, what did that look like uh, for them, and not surprisingly. Uh, a lot of the consistent elements were coming through. It was a very reactive environment, very much where the world was happening uh, to those business partners, to those leaders. Right? They were uh, chasing information of one kind or another, trying to meet a, uh, a request or a demand. Uh, whatever particular issue had sprung up that day or that week, uh, maybe it's a, a, a payroll issue where we've paid some folks incorrectly, um, there may be some challenges in one part of the business where we're struggling to get talent uh, in a particular function or for a particular type of role. Um, maybe there's a strategic uh, focus that we're trying to get to and we have a lot of barriers that we, uh, we don't know which barrier is the largest so we just try and tackle them all. And in many of these conversations, uh, I always, you know, tongue in cheek, uh, say if I had a, a a quarter for every time someone said, Patrick, you don't understand, uh, it's it, it's it's chaotic. 
I probably uh, could retire already. And it's an interesting story where when I started asking, you know, the, the parable around firefighting and as you see from the screen that dealing with a series of workplace emergencies on a top priority basis, you know, could you tell me on an average day Right? How much time do you spend firefighting? How much of your work is reactive versus proactive? How much of your work is intentional? And you know, some some conversations uh, went down a path where, oh, I you know, I feel I'm very intentional and I, I don't do a lot of re, uh, reactive type work. And others were very reactive. And as I collected this data and had these conversations, you know, it was a, a common theme that we saw where. As much as 60% of our business partner, HR business partner's time and our HR leader's time was spent firefighting, was spent being reactive. And when you think about you know, the foundational elements of lean transformation, that's, that's not what we're, that's, that, that's not going to be a sustainable approach, right? The mindset that I was tasked with transforming is moving the leadership and moving the business partner's mindset away from that traditional environment of firefighting and reacting to the next biggest fire and moving more towards shrinking the amount of time that we're executing daily work, shrinking the amount of time that we are firefighting and focusing on that breakthrough continuous improvement. But before we could really, I mean, this is this is great. This is, you know, Patrick, I get it. Spend less time firefighting. Yes, please sign me up. But to make that, that first step towards that journey, we had to first talk about being intentional as a leader. When we talked about being intentional, right, some may take the word intention and say, oh, that means a plan. I need to have a plan. But it's actually a little more thorough and in depth than that, right? Pass above and beyond having a plan, it's about acting with intention, particularly around strategic activities, right? So, does that leader and the, and the folks who work for them and their team, do they know what the strategy is? Or we're trying to get from uh, a, a customer value point of X to a customer value point of Y in the next six months in the 12 in the next 12 months what activities need to occur in order to meet that new customer value Y also from a point of intention we know that being progressive and diverse and inclusive is important right Diversity is a fact in an in HR organization, and HR professionals around the world respect and grab hold that, yes, we need diverse workplace, we need progressive workplace. But in, inclusion from a diversity standpoint, inclusion from a progressive standpoint, that is a choice, right, that requires intention. And intention is all about choice, right? Today, am I going to react to fires? Or am I going to focus on spending my time being strategic and proactive? An example that uh, we give several of our leaders um, is the first expedition to the South Pole. And there were two different teams uh, that uh, were both trying to, uh, at the time, sled dog and, 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 and sled to the, the true South Pole. The team from Norway that you see pictured was very intentional in their approach. They had spent months preparing, they had plans, they had backup plans. All of the members on the team knew their role and knew what the strategic objective was. The second team, which you don't see pictured and you don't see pictured because they never quite made it, took a very reactive approach. They were confident in their skills as sledders. We can sled anywhere. Let's just go, right? And in that parable, it's 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 a it's a good takeaway. It's a good story uh, to help drive home that it doesn't have to be a life or death situation for us to be intentional, right? Sometimes we have to take a an intentional approach. 
uh, a story that had connected uh, with uh, one of my client groups recently. It was around a basketball team. And this high school coach uh, had inherited a basketball team that, in fact, wasn't very good. They, weren't, they, they, they couldn't score the ball very well. They couldn't move the ball very well. And in trying to take a traditional approach to the game, and, and he researched online and talked to other coaches, different offensive sets and def defensive sets that they tried to employ just like everybody else, they were continuing to lose every basketball game by 20 and 30 and 40 points. And only whenever he changed his intention, instead of being reactive to how the other teams were playing and reactive uh, to what other coaches were telling him, he decided to intentionally take a different approach. And in taking that different approach, it was to only full court press the other team the entire game. Right? The intention was to not let that team make it past half court. And in doing so, in changing how they were playing, they started winning games. Now they were really low scoring games. They'd win a game 10 to 8 or 14 to 12. Right? But the other basketball coaches were up in arms Right, that this isn't this isn't basketball and this isn't what it was meant to be. But that leader took an intentional approach. Right? They knew that the current method wasn't working, and in, in, it took an intentional approach to try something new. And in doing so was able to transform how basketball was played. Now the 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 other side of this story, and the challenging question I have, uh, and a few more here in, in just a couple of slides, is: Are are you in being reactive, right, and doing these same things each day and expecting different results, right? Are we creating a culture that it, it, we're not able to see the warning signs, right? If we're reacting to everything, we're not proactively looking ahead, right? Do we become those lemmings that can march right off the cliff, right? When we're not proactively looking for those warning signs ahead of us. So my challenge, you know, after telling a couple parables and telling a few stories, right? That's good and great and all, but it had to get folks to understand first: is there order in the chaos? Because I told you earlier, when I asked that question. You know, what do we spend more time on? Do you do you consider yourself reactive? And then he said, Patrick, you don't understand. It's a there there it's a chaotic world and here's all of the things that that happen to me. Right? I was started to ask a few uh, fact finding questions. So I wanted to know who their customers were. Right? When we talk to HR professionals, who are your customer? What do those customers expect? Is their expectation something that you can deliver? Right? How much time do you spend meeting those expectations? Right? So it became an almost like a napkin exercise. Right? So let's jot down on a napkin. You know, what are the things that we need to execute as HR professionals in a, in a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis? What are those things? What are those obstacles in meeting those expectations and demands? What are the things that are keeping me from being able to meet my customer expectations? By being intentional and just writing it down, a quick five-minute exercise on a napkin, right, it was an eye-opening experience for a lot of the groups that I worked with and a lot of the clients that I worked with. Because once you write something down, it becomes intentional, right? And we started to identify, well, maybe I... I think I know what my customer wants, but I haven't I haven't directly asked them in a while. Right? So it forced us to have a few conversations around customer expectations. Right? I think I know what the obstacles are, but are they true obstacles or are they perceived obstacles? Right? Do I really have resistance from one group or another, or am I just fearful that I'm going to have resistance? Right? In writing that down, we were able to at least begin the conversation to move from reactive to proactive. So my challenge for the group and for all of us as we move forward, transforming in HR from a mindset perspective, right? around that 
making order out of chaos first do we know where right do we understand where and what and how and who the fires that you deal with are coming from and who are they created by and I would initiate those conversations right and many times oh yeah yeah I, I know who it is Patrick it's it's the payroll group and everything that they do I always have to clean up okay well that's a great start to the conversation but it doesn't tell me a whole lot right how many how many errors are you seeing what types of errors are you seeing how long does it take to resolve those and you may think that I'm professing that you need to maintain elaborate spreadsheets to, to document all of these different things and I'd tell you absolutely not the most powerful tool that we've embraced here at Ingersoll Rand and understanding uh, the and trying to make order out of the chaos is a three by three inch post-it notepad and we have several different colors but whenever I uh, whenever I am responding to a a fire if you will right an abnormal condition and if it comes from the payroll group I may I may take a a, a single three by three off the top of the pink post-it pad and I'll put it on my cubicle wall and I'll put it under Tuesday right and I may jot a, a short note down on that on that post-it pad but I'm not going to spend more than a few seconds right that says here's the payroll error right and here's how much time it took me to fix that and I'm going to put that on the wall maybe who it came from and if you do that for a few weeks right you've got a a few post-its from the payroll group you have some employee issues right around a particular uh, concept or, or or policy as you start to collect those you're then able to stand back and look at your cubicle wall which if you added up all the time that you spent on it probably wouldn't equal 30 minutes and say hey what's this telling me and you may see a you know a a stack of pink post-it notes that tell you that you know you have payroll errors from a particular group that are consistent and they always seem to happen on certain days of the week right you may have an employee issue that you, you know you have a variety of, 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 of employee issues but there's one that just seems to be happening much more than the others right which is going to force you down a path of asking different questions right as you start to see these simple basic post-it notes on your cubicle wall or on your office wall that only took you a few seconds to throw up there you're now starting to understand which fires are the biggest so in, in, and again this is moving us from reactive to proactive so instead of trying to solve each fire as it comes to me by collecting them simply I'm now starting to paint a picture of where I should be focusing my time and if I'm able to be more proactive then these fires right, should start to go away again in tandem with this right how do you want to spend your time right so you're by throwing up a few post-it notes on the wall you're starting to understand how you're spending your time the challenging question is how do you want to be spending your time right to be successful in your role to meet your uh, personal and professional objectives to meet your business objectives how do you want to be spending your time how do you want your teams to be spending your time right write that down you now have things that you can compare you have your current state right what's happening those post-it notes and you can compare that to your intentional state where I'd like to be spending my time right that's going to drive different mindsets and different ways to think now right really starting to roll into a proactive mindset right that says how do I get the capacity to accomplish these things right I have this strategic vision but in order to accomplish these things I need to find out what I'm spending my time on now and how I can spend less time on those things right and this goes back to one of our first slides as we're moving from that 60% firefighting to a 20% firefighting right? and this is powerful for an HR business partner it's powerful for an HR leader but it's even more powerful for teams right so if you are an HR leader who has several direct reports you have a team that's reporting you're guiding the work of others right does your team know what they should be working on 
Or are they fighting as many fires as you are? Maybe they're fighting more than you. You can use such basic tools like uh, leader standard work and one-on-one -on -one meetings right, to move from a reactive towards a proactive, a much more intentional approach. Right? What are they spending their time on? What are their obstacles? What did, if they did the post-it note exercise on their wall for 30 days, what would that look like? Right? Are we confident that we know what that would look like? And this all rolls into my last challenging question, right? And it's around managing versus leading. And I've always professed that I would rather be uh, I would rather be led than managed. And I'm confident that if you talk to your team and the folks that, that work for you, they would emote the same thing that they would rather be led than managed. Right? If we are moving more towards a proactive approach, if we're being intentional about how we spend our time in a day if we are focusing energy towards that continuous improvement, right? An exercise that we could simply do, right? Write down the actions that you spend your time on today, that napkin exercise, right? Five minutes. And make a column beside that, two columns beside that list. And simply mark, one is reactive and one is proactive. Right? And then you know, again, it's something that you can hold and look at and ask yourself, you know, where am I spending my time? Are my activities reactive or are they proactive? Right? And again, that drives that intentional mindset that if your napkin exercise tells you that you are spending a lot of time being reactive, right, then it may be time to revisit our approach, right? To be that basketball coach that says, you know what, I'm going to change things up. Right? I'm gonna I'm gonna try and change the game. I'm gonna do things completely different to try and get different results. In taking this intentional journey, two years in a transformation, this has opened the door to the use of many lean tools in our environment. I'm excited to talk to you about those uh, in the future. Uh, I know that uh, Dwayne will talk more about the. Lean Summit, the Lean HR Summit in September, but one of the activities that this mindset change began to immediately drive us to is uh, visual management for HR, right? To turn those three by three post-it note exercises into actual functioning team boards, right? That allowed the teams to become much more intentional. And I look forward to talking to everyone about that in a couple of months. Yeah, so... Patrick, thank you. As you as you alluded to, that's going to be the topic of your specific presentation, is uh, visual management, right? That's correct. Yeah. Well, Patrick, uh, thank you for uh, for giving us a few things to think about here and giving us a direction in which to to start off and hopefully begin tackling uh, this this reactionary versus proactive uh, cycle that we find ourselves in. So. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you down in Savannah. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so let me, uh, let me jump in here to what I said I was going to talk about uh, at the end of our time today. Uh, we're not so naive as to think that this has given you all that you need. Hopefully this has given you some things to think about, some things to begin experimenting with, uh, some things to uh, begin uh, experiment, trying and experimenting with your, your peers. But we've intentionally created this Lean People Development Summit, which uh, Patrick referred to as the Lean HR Summit, which is what it was formerly known as, uh, because we've expanded kind of the scope of what we're doing, because the HR uh, uh, professional's role is expanding in this ever-challenging world. So. Let me first get into the special and unique offer, uh, something I said that we've not offered before. Uh, if you sign up for the Lean People Development Summit, uh, by the end of this week, let's say by the end of the day Friday, uh, we're gonna give you not, not only a 10% discount, which, which is nice, but what we're gonna do for you is we're gonna help form a custom learning plan for anyone who registers this week. What I mean by that is you're going to be contacted by somebody personally and ask, what are the three to five business challenges that you're facing? 
What are those things that you're facing yourself as an HR professional? What are those things that your company is facing? And we're going to help craft a custom learning plan for you. What does that mean? So what we'll do, given that we have in-depth understanding of the agenda, is we'll go through the agenda and help identify which sessions will probably best uh, address those needs that you have. Now where there are sessions that don't address the needs that you have, we're going to connect you with the number of thought leaders that are going to be there. I've always said that if you're looking for uh, kind of a who's who of uh, those who are in Lean HR, you're going to find them here. Uh, literally, those that wrote the book, uh, in this case, Cheryl Jekyll, wrote the book Lean HR is going to be there, as well as uh, uh, a myriad of another, uh, other thought leaders who have not only written about but practiced and coached others in this space. So we'll connect you with them one-on-one -on -one to address those issues that, that aren't being addressed. As Patrick was talking, it struck me that a great opportunity might be to set aside a table at lunch or at breakfast on firefighting. Uh, if you are struggling with firefighting and looking to how best to address that, we'll set aside a table where you can talk with your peers uh, about that specific subject. So we're going to help define exactly what your needs are and we're going to translate those into sessions that will help address those, people that you could talk to that will help address those, so that at the end of it, your three to five biggest issues, you've got some roadmap in how best to begin tackling that. So what I'm going to ask you to do is uh, visit leanpeopledevelopment.com, leanpeopledevelopment.com. That's where you'll find the summit website. And on the registration tab, once you've looked over the, the agenda, and don't just look at the agenda, dig into each of the session descriptions, because you'll find within that uh, a myriad of topics that are being covered that aren't necessarily reflected in the title. You can't obviously take an hour presentation and boil it down into a short title. So look into the session descriptions. Once you've done that, go to the registration tab and follow the link to get registered and register using the discount code learning plan, all one word. Use the discount code learning plan and that will give you your 10% discount and that will trigger us to contact you to find out what your biggest challenges are and then begin to connect you with how Lean can begin to address and solve some of those challenges. So. Thank you so much for taking a couple minutes here at the end to listen. Um, we'll send out some of this information uh, post uh, presentation and we'll put in the uh, web address, the, the discount code and so forth. So thanks for your time, not only today, but I hope to see many of you in the beautiful southern city of Savannah, Georgia. So until then, uh, go do good things. <laughs>